Welcome to section 6.2 of financial algebra. We're going to be talking about pay periods and hourly rates. This is again section 6.2 and I'm going to start off with the vocabulary section and hopefully tell you a little bit about um, you know my stories, my experiences with these particular vocabulary words to help uh, sink in what these things mean. <clears throat> So first we're going to be talking about the word weekly. When we're talking about paydays, we're talking about being paid once per week. There are 52 weeks in a year, so if you get paid weekly, you will be paid 52 times in one year. Bi-weekly means you're going to get paid every other week. So if it's every other week, we take the 52 weeks, divide it by two since you're being paid every other week, and you would get 26 paychecks per year. Semi-monthly is paid twice per month. I use semi-monthly payments to pay my employees. They get paid on the 5th and the 20th of every month, which means they're going to get paid two times per month. And since there are 12 months in a year, times two times that they get paid per month, there are 24 paychecks per year. Next, we got monthly paid. This is how teachers get paid, by the way, at least in our school district. Teachers get paid once a month, and that means that they get paid 12 times per year. 12 times per year is monthly. Now, when you get paid, most times you're not going to get paid direct uh, direct cash into your hand. Um, there are some places that will pay you cash, but for the most part, you're going to get either a physical check uh, that you have to go to the bank and deposit, or your employer is going to offer the option of direct deposit. That means that you're going to work and you're going to earn a gross pay, which we'll talk about here in a second but the direct deposit is the net amount of your paycheck that is automatically placed into your account that's what direct deposit is the net amount <clears throat> and we'll talk about that here in a second um, now when you do get a job usually you're gonna get paid an hourly rate meaning you're gonna exchange your time for money the, and so our definition for hourly rate here is uh, the amount you are paid for each hour worked Right, so you're gonna exchange your time for money. You go in for four hours. If you make ten dollars an hour, you're gonna earn forty dollars. Now, sometimes uh, you're gonna be there either over an eight-hour period, or you worked forty hours in a work week, and then you start working what's called overtime. Now, there are two different types of overtime that you can earn. The first one is time and a half. It means that it's an overtime pay rate that gives you one and a half times your hourly rate. So, if you earn ten dollars an hour one time your hourly rate would be ten dollars an hour but time and a half means that you're gonna earn your ten dollars an hour plus an additional half of your hourly rate so ten dollars and then half of ten dollars is five dollars add those two together time and a half would be fifteen dollars per hour for each overtime hour now your double time that usually happens at let's say you work um, seven straight days in a 40-hour work week once you hit that seventh day, most employers will give you what's called double time pay. It's an overtime rate, but it's twice your hourly rate. So if you earn $10 an hour and you've entered the zone of double time overtime pay, you're going to be earning $20 an hour. So let's say you worked for 40 hours in a work week, you make it $10 an hour, your gross pay would be $400. Now gross pay is the next vocabulary word, and this is your total pay, which includes salary, hourly, overtime, or bonuses before taxes and deductions. So even though you worked 40 hours at $10 an hour, which would bring $400, that's not what you're going to get in your direct deposit. Remember, direct deposit is net. Before you get any of the net amount, we're going to withhold taxes, we're going to withhold any other deductions, and you get what's left over. But lastly, we have minimum wage. Now, minimum wage is set by federal and state minimums, and, and your employer has to abide by them, right? So federal and state minimums that an employer is allowed to pay you as an employee, if you're earning less than minimum wage, your employer is technically breaking the law. They have to pay you at least the minimum, and the federal sets a minimum that's lower than the state of California. We're in California, so the state minimum is higher, and we have to abide by the state minimum in that case. But uh, there are some some jobs that you earn a little bit less uh, these are jobs like um, restaurant workers for example because they earn tips they have a special rate but other than that the federal and state sets the minimum pay 
All right, we're going to work on example problem number one here. Uh, James is paid bi-weekly. His annual salary is $42,000. What, what is his bi-weekly salary rounded to the nearest cent? What if you earned X dollars bi-weekly and how much would you earn annually? All right, so the first part of the problem, they give us an annual salary amount. They tell us it's $42,000. $42,000 and we have to break that up into his bi-weekly salary remember that the word bi-weekly means twice uh, and this is meaning every other week that we're getting paid so this is 26 paychecks per year so we're taking that 42,000 divided by 26 and when we do that we get $1,615.38 uh, once we round it to the nearest cent and that is how much he's going to earn every other week from his job if he earns $42,000 a year. So now the second part of the question is asking us to do this algebraically. What if you earn X dollars bi-weekly, how much would you earn annually? So if we know how much we're earning bi-weekly, that's X dollars, then all we have to do is multiply that by the 26 paychecks that we're earning uh, for the year and that'll tell us how much we're earning each year so our answer is going to be 26 X if we know what uh, how much we earned X dollars bi-weekly how much would we earn annually X times 26 all right example number two here we have Mila is being paid semi monthly her semi monthly salary is one thousand three hundred and twenty nine dollars what is her annual salary and then the second part of the question is the algebraic version, which is what is um, what is what if you earned? I think that's the typo. What if you earned X dollars annually? How much would you earn semi annually? So we're going to break that up from annual payments to semi monthly payments. So Mila is earning semi monthly payments, which means she gets paid twice per month and she's going to earn 24 paychecks per year. If each one of her paychecks is one thousand three hundred and twenty nine dollars. Then all we have to do is take that $1,329, multiply it by 24 for each one of the paychecks she's going to earn in the year, and voila, she earns $31,896 for the year. Now, the second part is the algebraic part. So what if you earned X dollars annually? How much would you earn semi-annually? So we're going to work this problem backwards. If I already know I make X dollars per year, and I have to break that up into my semi-monthly payments, which means I have to break that up into 24 paychecks, then the answer that I'm looking for is X divided by 24. All right, example number three, we have Liam who earns $9.70 per hour. If he worked 40 hours per work week, uh, well, 40 hours per week, what is his regular weekly pay? So in this example, if Liam's earning $9.70, $9.70 per hour, and he worked a total of 40 hours. We got to make that $9.70 and multiply it by 40. So when we do that, we just plug that into our calculator and we end up seeing that it's $388 is what he's earning. $388 and this is per week, right? So um, the next part of the question says, well, if you earned X dollars per week, if you earned X dollars for Y hours per week, how much would you earn in a year? So we don't. So this nine dollars and seventy cents that that Liam is earning, that's what he's earning dollars, X dollars, and he's he's mul he's earning that for every Y hour. So the Y, so the hours that we have here is forty. That becomes Y. So what we're looking in our example is X times Y is going to give us our weekly pay. Right, so that's weekly. So X Y is our weekly amount, and we need to figure out how much he earns. Um, for the year so if that he if that's how much he earns if he earns X Y dollars per week And we know that there are 52 weeks in a year All we have to do is multiply the 52 times the X Y and that is our algebraic expression For figuring out how much money Liam earns if he earned X dollars for Y hours per week Okay, Liam uh, from example three worked three hours of overtime. We're working on example number four now. So Liam worked three hours of overtime. If he earns one and a half times his hourly rate for overtime, how much is his overtime rate? So in this case, we're going to take his $9.70. So write that down, $9.70. And we're going to multiply that by 1.5. Why 1.5? If we multiply 9.7 by 1, we get 9.7. That represents his hourly rate. But I want one and a half times his hourly rate. So that's where I get the 
point five. The point five is that additional half of of what he's earning. So if I take that nine dollars and seventy cents, I multiply it by one point five, I end up with fourteen dollars and fifty five cents. That fourteen fifty five is what he's earning when he's earning overtime hours. So the first forty hours that he earns, he earns in regular dollars, but the second, the, the three hours, the second section of his earnings, those are overtime. He's earning $14.55 for that rate. So let's say he worked his 40 hours. And in the previous problem, we saw that for $9.70 times his 40 hours, he ended up with $388 for the week. But then he worked $14.55 for three hours so he got extra overtime for three hours so if you multiply that out he ends up earning forty three dollars and sixty five cents for that additional three hours of overtime and then if you add in his regular hours his total gross paycheck is going to be four hundred and thirty one dollars and sixty five cents all right now the second part says if you earn x dollars per hour regularly how much do you earn for overtime at time and a half? So if you earned X dollars per hour regularly, how much do you earn for overtime? Well, we already said that Liam was earning $9.70 per hour. That's his X dollars regularly. And then if he earns time and a half for overtime, he's got to multiply that X by 1.5. So our algebraic answer is 1.5X, and that represents how much he's earning at overtime rate time and a half. All right, example number five, Armando here, he earns $10 per hour. His regular work week is 40 hours and receives time and a half for working more than 40 hours per week. Find the total pay for a 45 hour work week. Okay, so in this section, we gotta break up that 45 hours into its two different components, into regular hours and overtime hours. So first we need to calculate how much he's earning for the 40 hour work week. So we write down the 40 hours and it and those are his regular hours so he's earning ten dollars per regular hour worked so if we take that forty dollars and we multiply it by the ten dollars an hour he's gonna earn four hundred dollars for his first forty hours but remember Armando didn't work forty hours he worked forty five hours so five of those hours he gets paid time and a half so if we take that ten dollars and we multiply it by one point five we get fifteen dollars which means those five hours he wasn't earning ten bucks he was earning fifteen bucks so we multiply the fifteen hour uh, the fifteen dollars for the five hours that he worked in overtime and we get seventy five dollars so we add up the four hundred regular the seventy five in overtime and we get a total of four hundred and seventy five dollars for Armando's work week that's his gross overtime pay so now if we look at this algebraically, if you look at uh, the second section, if you worked 40 hours per week at a rate of X dollars per hour and worked Y overtime hours paid at time and a half, how much is your, uh, is your weekly pay? So here's what happens in this one. We have to add these two sections together. Remember that the 40 hours uh, represents the Y, uh, the 40 hours, uh, we have to multiply that by his rate of X. Okay, so we multiply 40 hours by X, and that's going to give us his regular time hours. But we're also going to add in here the overtime hour he worked, right? The overtime hour that he worked was 1.5 times the amount of money he makes, right? So that's 1.5 times X, because remember, we don't know that he's making $10 anymore. We, he's making X dollars per hour. So we're adding the regular hours, which is 40X, plus his overtime hours, which is 1.5X, but he's going to work a total of Y hours. So this this expression that we need to do is 40X, which represents his, his regular hours, plus 1.5XY, which represents his overtime rate, times the number of hours that he worked in overtime those combined become his total weekly pay example number six is basically a, a we're pulling some information here from uh, the previous problem so in the previous problem you remember we had an algebraic expression 40x plus 1.5x times y and that was telling us how much she uh, how much Armando was gonna earn for a week pay without knowing his hourly rate now in this case we know that that expression right there that same expression the 40x plus 1.5x y is equal to uh, six hundred and eleven dollars and five cents uh, that's how much Heather earned after working 40 regular hours and seven overtime hours at time and a half. Now, 
we're going to have to substitute in a value for y because we actually know the overtime hours. And the overtime hours is represented by y. So instead of using y, we're going to have 40x plus 1.5x times 7 is equal to $611.05. And now we're just going to do some math and solve for x. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply that 1.5 times 7, and that's going to give us $10.50. That's our hourly uh, overtime rate, $10.50 times x hours plus 40x. And that's going to give us $611.05. When I add those two together, that's going to give us $50 or 50.5x. I'm sorry, these are the total hours worked, not the uh, hourly rate is equal to 611 and 5 cents and then we're going to divide by 50.5 on both sides to get x by itself and when we do that x comes out to be twelve dollars and ten cents and that represents what her hourly rate is now if we take that 1.5 and multiply it by x it'll give us her overtime rate but all it was asking us for was what was her regular hourly rate and so we were able to use the expression from before plug in some solutions and variables that we found out based on our worded problem and then solve for x okay last one example number seven now this is probably the most mathy problem that we'll have in this entire chapter because it mostly has algebraic letters and it's making us solve for uh, X in terms of R and T so we'll do this we'll do this here together so Raleigh worked R regular hours and T overtime hours at time and a half her gross pay was $700 and X represents her hourly rate so now we're gonna express X in terms of R and T in other words we're gonna figure out what her hourly rate is and then we can use the hourly rate to determine how much she earned divided by how much she earned in regular and overtime hours okay so let's try to make sense of this so we start off by, I mean, doing a basic overview of what we have. So we have um, regular hours plus overtime hours equal the total pay, right? I mean, that's basically what we're doing here. If I work regular hours plus my overtime is going to be my total pay. And now we're going to substitute in what each of these are. So how do we get regular hours? Well, she earned our, our uh, she worked for our hours regular hours and she earns x dollars per hour that's her hourly rate so that's her regular hours regular hours times her rate is going to equal total regular pay right plus um, her overtime is time and a half so that's 1.5 times x because she earns x dollars an hour times 1.5 since she's earning time and a half and she earns that rate times t overtime hours okay so we have rx plus 1.5x times t and she earned a total of $700 uh, for the, her, was her gross pay. So now we gotta get X all by itself. So the first thing I notice is I have an X on the left uh, side of my addition sign and I have an X on the right side of my addition sign, which means I can factor an X out of both of these uh, terms. So when I do that, I have X left on the outside and in parentheses I have what's left over uh, from this part of my expression from the uh, addition sign. So in this term here, I end up with uh, R being left over because I took the X out. And on this side, when I take the X out, all I have is 1.5T left over. So basically, it's like a reverse distribution. I've, I've taken out the X of both terms. And when I do that, I end up with X parentheses R plus 1.5T close to parentheses is equal to 700. Now I got one X by itself. So since X is being multiplied by everything in the parentheses, I'm going to divide by everything in the parentheses because when I divide something by itself, it becomes one and that'll leave me with one X left over on the left side of this equation. And on the right side, I'm going to have 700 divided by R plus 1.5 T, the same thing I divided by on the left hand side. And that is my answer there. That is my final um, equation here that represents, uh, that expresses X in terms of R and T. It's saying that my hourly rate is equal to whatever I earned, which was $700, divided by my regular hours plus my overtime hours. Now, if I divide those, I'm going to get what, uh, how much I get paid per hour. Okay, so that was, uh, that was the mathiest one of all, but that concludes chapter 6.2.